Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Spider-Verse Retrospectives. And today we're going to be continuing our discussion on the Spider-Force miniseries as we take a look at Spider-Force number two. So, <clears throat> last time on Spider-Force. So, with the Inheritor's return, Otto's side of the Spider Army believed that if they wanted to try and neuter the Inheritors where it hurt, they needed to get the Soulless Crystal before they could so they couldn't revive their father, which of course meant going to taking a trip to Earth-3145. To accomplish this task, Kane Parker, aka the second Scarlet Spider, wound up assembling a team of Spideys who he believed would be perfect for the job. That team consisted of himself, Jessica Drew, aka Spider-Woman, Ashley Barton, aka the Spider-Bitch of, er of the Old Man Logan universe, and a new Spidey created specifically for Spider-Geddon. Um, Peter Charlie Parker, a.k.a. the Spider-Kid, a 13-year-old version of Peter who had an abusive Uncle Ben and who ran away from home first chance he got and now lives on the streets doing his super heroics not only to protect his neighborhood but also to get some extra cash so he can at least have a place to live. As such, the four, this team of Spideys... As such, with his team of Spideys recruited, the four of them wound up traveling to Earth 3145 to hopefully stop the Inheritors from getting crystal. From, eh, to hopefully stop the Inheritors from getting the Soulless Crystal, or more specifically, Verna, since she's the one with the Dimensional Teleporter watch. But upon arriving on Earth 3145, Kane wound up shorting out all their watches because it turns out this is kind of a one-way trip, as he wants to ensure that Verna cannot escape. So he's doing this to try and not to try and short out her watch as well. Only nobody knows if she's actually on Earth, and well. Obviously, some of the Spideys there are a little angry that they were tricked like that. Especially Jessica, since she has a child at home waiting for her. However, the team of Spideys don't really have a lot of time to argue on this point, as the, la as the as last issue ended with them being attacked by a fifth Spider person, one who also calls Earth-3145 his home. Astro Spider, a.k.a. the Earth-3145 equivalent of John Jameson Jr., which is where the comic begins, actually enough, as John is, well, assaulting the team is assaulting the spider force, so to speak. Uh, part of the reason he's doing it is because he believes that they are, well, automatons. Just mu just robots that are here to scavenge and so forth, and, well, he, and so far, he believes that they are a threat. Of course, the Spideys try and get through to him that they're not the bad guys, that they are on his side, but he's not taking any chances. He just wants to try and get and take care of them as quickly as possible. And it's here we actually see what John's powers are as Astro Spider. As rather than having the traditional, as rather than having like traditional spider powers like you would expect, he actually has psychic powers. As when he speaks to the Spideys, it's actually in their heads, so he can read their minds and so, so forth. And as and on top of that, rather than shooting out regular webs from his wrists, he actually shoots out energy webs, which can not only be used as regular webs, but also can be used to throw up shields and so forth. It's actually kind of cool. I dig it. I dig it. Although it does make me wonder where the whole spider thing came from, but, well, again, he got his powers from a spider, which we'll get to in a minute. As such, again, the Spideys are, tr like I said, the Spideys are trying to convince John that they're on his side, but he's not exactly listening. However, as when Kane finally realizes that John is has, has psychic powers, he finally manages to convince John, why don't you look inside her minds, catch a glimpse. Of course, John's a little hesitant to do this because that could leave him open to an attack, but Kane just tells him it's just a glimpse, and so that shouldn't be enough for us to, for us for any of us to do any harm to each other. So, John takes a chance and does give a quick glimpse to everybody into everybody's mind, which does allow him to see into the minds of all the of all the assembled spider people here. Or more specifically, we get to see into the minds of two, Ashley Barton and Charlie. And we see that they both are not exactly, well, we see the more of their unhappy childhoods. As we see Ashley when she was still a kid as she ends up killing a bunch of guys in order to get supplies from the Kingpin. And then we end up cutting to Charlie as we see him cowering away in his room as his Uncle Ben is banging on the door telling him to open up. Which in turn causes Charlie to freak out to freak out in the real world as he doesn't want to see that and he and, he ends, and once he gets out of the psychic psychic link that John set up, he just outright attacks him. Which John, which John immediately apologizes for as with that quick glimpse, he now does know, he does now know that yeah, these Spideys are on the up and up and he does know who each of them are. So he does start to, so he does kind of start to trust them. On top of that, we also, but the thing is, it was a two-way streak. So not only did he see into that, their lives, but the Spideys also saw into his, which also allowed us to get more info out of him. And it's here where I am going to try and get more into his backstory, so to speak, because they do kind of explain it bit by bit throughout the comic, but I'm just going to try and get it all the way out as possible. So, why is John here? After all, the whole gimmick with his Earth was that it got nuked by Doc Ock. So, how is he still alive and acting as a new Spider-Person? 
Well, it turns out that at the time when, it turns out before Doc Ock, well, essentially nuked the world, John Jameson and, a, and his crew were sent out to space to, tr to essentially do repairs on a, uh, on a, well, a space dock, so to speak, where they were supposed to just go in, it, it, it's supposed, it was supposed to be just a place where, it was supposed to be a place where you could assemble ships outside, or you could assemble ships in space. And basically, John and his crew were being sent out there to just do regular maintenance, regular maintenance, permit, build more ships, and so on and so forth. It was just supposed to be a routine mission, in and out, and basically, and the whole, and the station was never meant for a long-term stay, because, it was, like I said, it was just supposed to be a temporary place and had enough supplies to last for six weeks. However... However, as the sh as John's ship was flying out into space, a spider was in his. It turns out there was a spider inside his spacesuit, and as he and his crew were going into space, they wound up they wound up passing through a radiation belt, which wound up affecting the whole ship. While everyone was mostly unharmed, John the radiation combined with a spider wound up mixing John's physiology with it, thus giving him thus giving him his spider powers. Unfortunately, it also caused his ship to crash. I'm assuming that he wound up getting a rescue mission in place, and so he and his, and so he and what was left of his crew were brought aboard the space dock because he does call that place home. But it was while he was on the space dock that Doc Ock nuked the world. So ever since then, he and his crew just been living out there on the on this on the uh, on the space station, just doing whatever they can to survive. With not with John utilizing his new psychic powers to go down to Earth and gather supplies whenever necessary, which is which is what he was doing, which is what he was doing when he attacked the spider when he attacked the spider people. As such. As such, with all the Spideys now, with all the Spideys now on the same page, they are now more open to trusting each other and talking it out and so forth. But there is still some minor tension as well, because not only because with John now being able to see inside their heads, he also is aware of one of of one little factoid that the team that the team doesn't exactly trust Kane right now, and for good reason. However, there was also an, however uh, however after being after John got a good glimpse inside Charlie's head he's now freaking out even more and now just demands more and more explanations because throughout this whole thing he kind of has been left a little bit more in the dark and he just wants to know why the hell he's even here at all why do they want him here what is the, what what purpose does he bring because after all last issue Kane mentioned how part of the reason he wanted the Earth 616 version of Jessica Drew was because she had experience they couldn't have raw spideys on them and yet spider kid is probably the most raw of them all. He's a 13-year-old who is living on the run. Probably has not had very much experience in the whole superheroing thing. He didn't even take part in the last Spider-Verse event. So why the hell do they want him for this? And Ashley's response is, because he caught the safe. He could have let the safe fly out of his apartment and then kill those innocent people. And yet he risked his life to go save him. Ultimately, while Charlie may not like it, he is still a version of Peter Parker and does still carry with him the same sense of responsibility. And thus, ultimately, whether Charlie likes it or not, he is a Spider-Man. Indeed, and thus he is, and thus they do believe he is necessary for the mission. As such, with everything cut as such, the rest of the spider to as such, the spider force does give John the whole lowdown on the the lowdown on the inheritors about how they are hunting spider people and how one of them one of them Verna is is now on Earth three one four five looking for the Solus crystal. Of course, John's not exactly willing to join the spider army on their mission because well. He has his own duties on this Earth to deal with. After all, the remnants of the, the people that are living on that space station are essentially the last living humans on this Earth, and he has a duty to keep them safe and protect them. So he's not just so he doesn't really want to just abandon his duties and go and to just go and help the help these Spideys stop these interdimensional vampires. However. However, immediately things are kind of cut short as when the team of Spideys go back to John's shuttle, which of course he's what, what he's using to go from Earth and back, they end up getting a distress signal from aboard the space station. Why? Verna's there. Yeah, it turns out that when Verna arrived on Earth 3145, she did seek out the Solus Crystal, and her findings led her to the space station. Yeah, it turns out that during one of John's expeditions, he apparently managed to grab the Solus Crystal and brought it back. We don't learn specifically why he did that until like the next issue, but put simply, it's out in space, and it's out in space, and the and the people of space station have been using it. So Verna wants it. 
And, well, so, and the first thing she did, and so, she's just been going around the space station hunting for it and trying to gather information on where it could potentially be from the inhabitants. By feasting on their life forces. Which, believe it or not, I can kind of, uh, I can actually, I can actually kind of believe that she can do. After all, we have seen that the inheritors can siphon the life force of more than just spider totems. It's just that they prefer to hunt spider totems specifically. Like I said, as after all, when in the lead into Spider-Verse, we saw that Deimos was feasting on all of, on all of Counter-Earth, and all of Counter-Earth's inhabitants. So, hey, whatever. So, yeah, and, well, they, well, so, you know, he, so, yeah, well, so, yeah, yeah. I'm getting tongue tied. My point is this: they can siphon the life of other beings. So, and, and this and this showcases that they can. It, it, yeah, that it doesn't need to be limited to animal totems. So, yeah, there you go. Basically, the point is the whole reason she's even siphoning other life forces to gain access to their memories. But sadly, she's on a bender. And she's just siphoning per, the life force of person after person and just leaving almost the entirety of the space station as dried up husks, which sadly includes John Jameson's wife Annie. And sadly, and unfortunately, the one person on the on the space station who managed to get out a distress signal, a man by the name of he of Hector, well, he doesn't. All he really got through to all he really got through to John was that someone was on board, was that Verna was on board the station and was and was killing people, including Annie. And sadly, that's all he got out before he got cut off. And even then, the only reason he got that distress signal out at all was because Verna just wanted to, was, was because Verna let him get it out for funsies. I don't, which maybe she could have done it, which maybe she did it to lure Sp Astro Spider back. I don't know. Point is this. The point is this: the space station, the, the situation on the space station is Fubar, so John wants to help them, and well, he doesn't want the spiders to do that because, after all, the inheritors hunt spider totems. They're all spider totems. He wants them to get off his ship. However, the Spideys refuse to leave. After all, Verna is their problem too, and they want and they need to stop her from getting to the crystal. So they insist on helping, and while John is is initially reluctant to let them come along. Well, they kind of don't give him any... Tr they kind of just tell him, look, either trust us or you don't, but we want to help. So, John does reluctantly bring them to the space station where he does kind of fill them in more on what they were doing there. As such, upon arriving, the team of Spideys end up splitting up, with Kane and Jessica going into the spit going in through the docking port to try and find Verna as she's going try and find Verna and stop her from getting the crystal, while likewise on the exterior of the ship, Astro Spider, Ashley, and Spider Kid are supposed are supposed to go straight to the airlock to try and are supposed to try and go in straight through the airlock. Unfortunately, though, Astro Spider kind of abandons Ashley and Spider Kid. He doesn't leave them high and dry, of course, as he does give as he does flash them a layout of the space station. As he does flash us the layout of the space station into their heads, and then throws them right to the spaceport via his psychic webbing. But ultimately, again, his main priority is to the people on the ship. And again, he heard that one of the victims was his wife. At that point, rational thought kind of goes out the window. So as such. So as such, the t as such, he immediately flies to the spaceship his own that flies to the space station his own way, while Ashley and Spider Kid have to just kind of fend for themselves. And it's here we actually get some honestly good character stuff from both teams, as Jessica and, and Kane, well, they are still not exactly seeing eye to eye. And again, for good reason, Kane tricked them. And part of the whole reason that Je and the thing is, Jessica and Spider Kid have started to figure out why, well, Charlie was brought along on this mission at all. You see, as they mentioned last issue, Verna prefers hunting spider totems that are young. The younger they are, the more delicious she finds them. Which is why Spider Kid was brought along. He's bait. He is just bait. That's the whole reason why Kane wanted him on this mission. It's not because he's an alternate Peter Parker with a strong sense of responsibility, but had a tough life to do it. No, 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 no. That stuff does make him a suitable candidate, but the whole reason why he was brought here at all was to draw out Verna because, again, he's a young spider totem. So as a result, Verna. So as a result, Verna may Verna's hunger to hunt his hunger for hunting for hunting him should, would be might override her logical sense of reason. Reasoning, which, yeah, Jessica's not okay with. Sorry, move over, Jindy. Sorry, sorry, I didn't want her. Fla I didn't want her in the light. But yeah, the, basically, Jessica's basically Jessica herself is not exactly happy with this. Though Kane tries defending himself by saying that that yeah, they may wear the tights and all that crap, but being a superhero isn't exactly an easy job, so to speak. 
so to speak. So yeah, again, Kane's kind of a douche. But on the other hand, we also. But on the other hand, going to Ashley and to and going to Ashley and Charlie, we actually do get like, some more good character stuff from them, and we see part of. And this is actually something that I genuinely like about this mini series, and it has to do with Ashley. As, here's the thing. In all of Ashley Barton's previous appearances in comics, well, she's been a bitch, plain and simple. The, like the term "spider bitch" does not just mean does not just like her nickname or whatever. That is who she is. She is a bitch, and there is a good reason for that. Like I said, she grew up in the Old Man Logan universe, a world ravaged by supervillains who pretty much have made it that you have to struggle to survive, and the only way you can be, uh, the only way you can get anything akin to a good life is if you align yourself with the crazy people. And so, as such, in that kind of world, of course, Ashley Barton would be as angry and bitter as she is. Of course, she would be vying for power. Of course, she would be willing to betray people for her own benefit. Of course, she'd be kind of an asshole. But the thing is, the thing is, she's still a... But when it comes to Charlie, she actually has been talking to him more. She actually has been nicer to him, which is very much different than what you would expect from mo from the other comics. Like I said, like, again, while she has been willing to work with spider totems in the past, hold on one second, sorry about that, Chinny wanted to be let out, but like I said, while Ashley has been willing to work with spider totems in the past, she has still been kind of standoffish. She's willing to participate with them to a degree, but even she has her limits with things, which, again, there are some, re there are reasonable reactions to that, but like I said, She's very much one of those, I don't do this for power and response for, I don't do this because great responsibility, I do this because I have a responsibility for myself. So, but the thing is, with Charlie, she has kind of had more of a soft spot with him. She's kind of been more, she's actually been trying to comfort him. Like I said, earlier in the issue, she talked about how part of the reason why Charlie was brought on, was brought on at all was because he grabbed the safe. She did, he did, all, he, she did. Like he could have, like like she said, he could have just let it fly out the window and not done anything, and yet he risked his life for other people. So and that I, what I like about so I kind of like that, and so basically Spider Kid is just and so basically as Spider Kid is just still kind of wrapping his head around this, and even starts coming to the realization that he was only here to act as bait for Verna. Well, what I like is what I like is that we see why. Ashley has been trying to be so nice to him and actually has been trying to encourage him to go down the whole great power, great responsibility route despite her upbringing. Because apparently some of her only positive memories were with her grandfather. Which I like. That actually opened, like in my guess said, that, op that honestly opens up a lot more avenues for her character and showcases that, yeah, she may be a heartless bitch, but there is still something there and in a way that kind of helps further explain why she adopted the spider mantle at all in her universe yeah she inherited her grandfather's powers but she had no obligation to follow in his footsteps again she could have just co-opted his symbol because well people are familiar with that people will follow that people will follow the new spider person on the block but the idea that the one of the few positive things in her life was her experiences with her world's Peter Parker. It's actually a really nice angle to take, and it showcases that. And it showcases that despite how much of a well, like I said, how much of a bitch she is, she there is a part of her that genuinely do, that did love her grandfather. And uh, and yes, while everything else in her life was no, uh, nothing but utter hell, at least there was this one bright spot in it. And I think that's a nice way of showcasing. And the way that she that we see that kind of come out when she interacts with Charlie is nice because she look, sees Charlie and sees you well know, her her grandfather, which again goes to why I love about alternate universes meeting different versions of people you know. From her perspective, this is a young version of the man who, as she said, used to rock her on his knee, take her to the park, and Char as Charlie puts it, like she like she mentioned that the only nice part of her childhood was when Peter was involved. So the idea of learning that, so the so the idea of learning that about Ashley and that ultimately while and that ultimately she does actively encourage Peter to be good because that he because he because he actually was a positive force in her life. I like that. 
it's nice. And it creates a genuinely good connection for why she is trying to help Charlie like she does. Because in a way, she can kind of relate to his tougher upbringing, but also, but also because she does want him to become the person that she would eventually grow up to idolize. I dig that. It's not, I dig that. It's nice. And I, what I love is that she even further tries to comfort him because she wants to further talk about the little glimpse into his mind that she saw. Because the glimpse into her mind was apparently the first time that she ever killed someone. So she's wondering if that's what, is that what, if that's what Charlie did in his memory. Though, though Charlie does end up, though Charlie denies it and does explain it. Yeah, while well, he may hate his uncle, the, the, the old man's still alive. So again, I do like that, but I also like this also this uh, the angle that Charlie takes to learning all this from Ashley, namely, he's not her grandpa. Yes, he may be his world's equivalent to that guy, but he's not him. Charlie is not Ashley's grandfather. He's Charlie. They may like her grandfather and Charlie may both be different versions of Peter Parker, but at the end of the day, they are not the same people. Ashley's grandfather was did have a good relationship with his uncle. He became Spider-Man because of the tragedy of it. Charlie became Spider-Kid because he had to grow up on the street, had a rough upbringing, and most likely didn't want other people, to, and, and ultimately, most likely because of the suffering he endured, he didn't want other people to suffer the same way. They both, they, they both came to similar out, out, they both came to similar ends, but they didn't, but they took different paths to get there. And ultimately, they have to remember, you have to remember that that's what, which is again another thing I love about the multiverse. While they may have, while they may both be the same guy, that doesn't mean they're the same guy. And I like that. I do like that. But either way, at the, either way, the conversation eventually ends as the pair of Spideys do manage to make it to the airlock and do attempt to un and do attempt to, to um, pressurize it so they can get inside the spaceship. And then the airlock explodes. Yay. How? Uh, However, it's at that the point where Verna finally senses the, the Solus Crystal and tries, to, and tries zeroing in on it. However, it turns out that where she senses it is in Astro Spider's hands, as he immediately webs her to the wall and decides, You want this crystal? Well, here you go, as he takes the Solus Crystal and stabs it right into her chest, causing the Inheritor to screech out in pain, ending the comic. So, yeah, that's a thing. Hold on one second again. Sorry, I wanted to let Chindi in, but yeah, but yeah, my thoughts on the issue, again, interesting stuff, but I think, I think in my opinion, one of the best parts in this comic is the character stuff. Okay, don't get me wrong, it still kept, keeps upping the threat level with showcasing Verna on the space station and hunting the various people one by one, but believe it or not, that's a small part of the comic, and as a result, the tension for that really is not that strong. It's, it's uh, sadly a little disappointing, but the real strength of the comic, in my opinion, is the great character drama that comes from this. Because after all, this team of Spideys what only came... After all, there's already tension existing between the members of the Spider Force, because after all, Kane tricked them to coming to Earth-3145, and likewise, once he got them there, he, he essentially cut off all escape routes, which is part of the reason why Jessica is, not, is hunting Verna as relentlessly as she is, because she's the only one with an actual working watch, and if she can get her hands on that, then she can at least go home. But the fact is, though, that despite that, Kane is still a liar, and while he does try to defend his actions, there's no defending it. He's an asshole, plain and simple. So I do kind of like that uh, the intermittent tension. And then mix that together with the stuff with Ashley and Charlie. Those, believe it or not, I think are genuinely good character moments. I love seeing them clash. And we get to see more of Charlie's angry side come out, especially when his past is dredged up and thrown in his face. Of course... Immediately, we start dropping the more sarcastic, snarky spider kid, and then seeing the more angry one who is just trying to run away from all the dark parts of his life. But then, likewise, that's when you have Ashley get brought in, and we get to see more of her on of her. And like I said, one of the, what I like about this story, about this comic, is that we're actually seeing more layers to her personality. Because, like I said, in every subsequent appearance before this, she's been kind of cold, distant, kind of a bitch, and in the case of Edge of Venomverse, just straight up villainous. But now we're actually seeing that there is a part of her that does hold positive memories, and that all those memories are associated with her world's Peter Parker. And I like that because it gives more layers to her character and probably further 
explains why she took on the spider mantle despite not giving a shit about the whole great power great responsibility mantra because ultimately she did care about her grandfather and in her own twisted way that's her way of honoring him i like that it's nice and it and because of that connection it allows it will she actually does try opening up to Charlie, being a friend to him, actually wants to try and bring out the better parts of him, despite, honestly, her environment not a lot being a place where that's where she shouldn't want to do that. But again, but again, he's a, he's a, like, oh, he's a weak spot, if you will. She see, she looks at him and she sees what her grandfather was or could have been or or could or could or just she just sees someone she just sees that raw potential she's and she associates it with the good times with her grandfather and so she wants this version of her grandfather to grow up to be like that man she didn't so she encourages it but then likewise there's a realistic clash from charlie as he learns as he learns about this because at the end of the day he's not that guy he isn't the grandfather that helped that helped ashley it's jet it's he's a different he's a different person he's a, he's had a different life so of course he would naturally want to resist that change he would naturally want to resist that and it's actually really good tension and it showcases more of both of both characters and what they're and what they're going through it's it's honestly good stuff and the cat then again combine that with the tension between jessica and kane as just as kane keeps trying to defend his actions despite how immoral they are while jessica wants to just get home i like that it's good stuff add on and then of course you got the stuff with astro spider not only is it still cool to learn more about another spider person on earth 3145 but i don't think he's a bad character my admittedly it's more standoffish but like with ash but like how you can give an explanation for ashley's bitchy behavior you can actually give it a, a suitable explanation Explanation for why Astro Spider is keeping everybody at arm's length because ultimately he's the last he's for he's to use a metaphorical term the last defender of Camelot with Camelot in this case being the last being the last of the human beings he's he's the only one that's it he's the last superhero in this world his world spot after all spider Ben went to go live in the MC2 universe so he's not around anymore and likewise the whole earth is nuked Anybody that used to live there is gone. Admittedly, you could also say that maybe there's alien races out there, but maybe they want to avoid the irradiated planet is what I'm saying. But the point is this. He is the last line of defense again for the last batch of humans. So, of course, while he do well, when, the, when the Spideys do tell him about the inheritors and the threat they pose... He doesn't give a shit. His main priority are to these people. It has to be to those people. He's sympathetic to the spider's plot and or the spider's plight and does help them to a degree, but ultimately his main concern is with his family, his friends, his loved ones. Those are who he has to take who has to take priority. And so I like kind of seeing that. I kind of like seeing that. While he eventually doesn't see the spiders as enemies anymore, at the very least there is still some kind of clashing between their ideals as he wants to protect as he as his main concern is saving what's left of humanity, while the spider's main concern is stopping the inheritors from gaining more gaining more power with the crystal. So I do like that. That actually is a realistic clash as well. As as it doesn't involve tr distrust between each other. Well, there is some distrust because he only got a glimpse of their minds. But likewise, it does. But likewise, it is an interesting angle to take. And the idea of a psychic astronaut Spider-Man, I did. It's I dig it. I was. It's a little. It's not. It's not exactly what I like. It's not exactly my fa my favorite iteration of the character, but still an interesting one. So I dig it. It's it's nice. And but of course, and again there. And again, I will admit the finale of the com of the ending of the com of the comic having John stabbing Verna through the heart with a soulless crystal. That's badass. I can't deny that. That is actually badass. After all, they are meant to be interdimensional vampires, right? So what better way to take them out than through a stake to the heart? I like that. And sp and the thing is, kind of minor spoilers, we did we do see that him doing that did do some damage to Verna. So, good stuff. I like it. I like that. So, yeah, on the whole... Still, in, uh, still a good comic. Great character interactions. Gives us more window into what's going on. Prefer continues keeping the story going. Continues keeping the story going. A downside, thing, unfortunately, is the stuff with Verna doesn't feel as tense as it should be. As again, most of the focus is on the t on the team of Spideys. Though again, though I won't say that the stuff with Verna is bad either. I'm just saying that I'm just saying it feels lesser in comparison to the stuff with all the spiders as they try and find their way to counter them. I'm not gonna, again. It is horrific. though. it is horrific. I will not deny because after all, when the spite when Kane and Jessica do arrive on the space station and they find the dried out husks of of this of the station's denizens it's a uh, pretty fucking horrifying and they even and to even add insult to injury they state that in an anti-grav situation their powers are next to useless so that's lovely but again on the, but again on the whole 
The big ma the major major draw for me in this issue is the character stuff, the interactions, the tensions, the gr the the the, exp the learning more about our, our characters and what drives them. I, mean, I like that. It's interesting stuff, and overall, it makes it make it draws me in. It makes me want to see what happens next, especially with how things turn out for all the team, for all the teams, and where and makes you wonder how things are gonna go. So, overall, overall, still interesting. So, yeah. I think that's about it. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson. Chindy Regina is down here. And I hope to see you on Saturday as we look at the final issue of Spider-Force. So till then, I hope you have a good Thursday and take care.